the Tulsa Golden Hurricanes. Now, Philip Montgomery, uh, let, let me start off with this. Uh, they went 7-6 and six last year, and that is because they, they really kind of started rolling towards the end of the season. Um, they were not good. They started off last year losing to an FCS opponent. I think it was UC Davis that they lost to. Um, this team could have been any number of things last year. They were 5-4 and four in one-score games. Uh, this year, they are projected favorite in six games. Four of them, they are projected to win by one score or less. Um, and by <laughs> one score or less, meaning one score between one point and seven points. So, um, Montgomery, that's what I was going with. Philip Montgomery was the OC at Baylor under Art Bryles. And early on, you kind of got the suspicion that Tulsa was going to start flinging the ball around, and they certainly did early on. This team has been led by the defense for the past. I was just about to say, yeah. they, have, they have ran the ball, ball control and smothering defense for the last, what, three years now? Yeah, and this is a team that, uh, it, look, this offense is ranked outside of the top 50 in yards per play in five of the seven years under Philip Montgomery. That's insane. Absolutely insane. Um, they have got to, for them to be successful, they have to overperform and find a way to develop this unrecognized talent on defense over and over and over again. They lost wide receiver Sam Crawford Jr. They lost defensive tackle Jackson Player, both to transfer, and, and Player is going to be a starter at Baylor this year. Like He's transferring away from Tulsa to go be a starter in the Big 12. Like you keep developing these guys. Like Jackson Player was an All American last year, and and yet he transfers. Out. And I understand it. You, you got an opportunity to go do something bigger and better. Totally get it. Um, well, let's talk about the offense here. Um, uh, by the way, their projected SP plus record this year is six and six. Uh, they're number one fourteen in returning production, so that's certainly not good. Uh, the offense they get Davis Brin back, the quarterback, but they lost uh, Shamari Brooks, the running back. That hurts. Uh, they lost five of their top seven pass catchers. Like, the passing game was good last year, number 42 in success rate, but they were not explosive. They were number 68 in 20-plus yard passes last year. Uh, the run game was number 90 in rushing success rate, even with Brooks. Uh, now they've got four new offensive line starters, and their second and third running backs are back, but I don't know that they can improve a whole lot from number 90 in rushing success rate. Uh on top of the top 50 defense the last three years, like can you continue to do that? Uh, they've kind of shown that they can with unrecognized talent. Um, they're just developing guys. Uh, defensive tackle Jackson Player, like I mentioned, he's out. Defense still wasn't good against the run. They were number 90 in rushing success rate allowed. Uh, three defensive linemen with 200-plus snaps back. Uh, four linebackers with 140 back. Secondary was really good last year, number 30 against the pass uh, as far as success rate goes. The safeties have experience. Cornerback has, eh, you know, eh, we'll see. I, I'm curious your thoughts here on on what Tulsa is. I, I never really know what to do with this team. I, I don't either. I think Tulsa is going to struggle this year. I think this is going to be a comeback to the to the group um, kind, of, uh, kind of season. I, I've got them 6-6 six and because six I really like the style of ball they play. Um, in that smothering defense, uh, you know, and, and ball control offense. But if they ended up five and seven, it wouldn't surprise me. I have them at six and six, and I'm with you. Like, I, this team cannot afford a loss uh, against Jacksonville State in the third game. Um, yeah. They, they they can't really afford a loss against Northern Illinois or at Wyoming. Like, it, you're, you're not in conference. You kind of have to roll through that. Because um, the schedule is, is kind of brutal for them. So I, you well, know, yeah, I mean, uh, this, they, this conference is getting better. Like, there's one team that we're not talking about today that's in this conference that I think is going to be much improved. You hit on them a touch earlier in Tulane. Tulane plays all these middle level teams. They play East Carolina. They play Tulsa. And and I, I'm not just chalking those up to W's for those other teams. I think yeah. Tulane's going to pick off one or two of these teams. Yeah. No, I, I don't think you're wrong. Uh, they only brought in Tulsa only brought in four transfers, two on offense, two on defense, and they lost a ton. I mean, just an absolute ton. This coaching staff is going to have to overperform again. I've got them six and six because they just continue to do it. But yeah, it, that's it, that was my thing. Is is they've done it? This will be you know three years now. They've done it, 
and I didn't think there was any way on earth they could do it. And so that's the reason they get the extra game bump. If I was fair and honest, I would say five and seven. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat. So I, we both are. I just said, in. I don't know what game they're going to win, but they're going to win one of these games I'm not expecting them to because they're just a well-coached team that seems to not make mistakes. And I'll tell you this, like the, the god of football himself, Bill Belichick has said this more times than not. More teams lose games than win them. And if you can just not lose them, you can come out on the winning side a lot. And that's what Tulsa's done the last three years. That's what this coaching staff has done. They just don't make mistakes. They don't beat themselves. They don't do anything explosive at all on offense. But they smother you and suffocate you on defense. And then they just don't make mistakes. Yeah, towards the end of the season, they really, really cleaned up the mistakes. But overall on the season, number 101 in turnover margin, number 101 in penalties per game. Uh, Now, like I said, they cleaned it up towards the end of the year. But... Whew. Uh, wow, that surprises me early on that they had all those. Mistakes. Well, I mean, think that's that's how they lost to UC Davis. That's how they were losing all these games early, uh, and then they had to win yeah. four straight at the end of the year to go seven and, and six. And then, they, and then they roll off four. Yeah, then they roll off four straight wins at the end of the year. You're, I guess you're right. It's just how the season played out. Is they got better, they improved, and they could certainly do the same thing again this year. Uh, they, you know, improve as the season goes along. But, or just not make the mistakes early. Yeah, that's the that's the situation. If you've got a young team, uh, you expect the mistakes early. But if you can get them to where they're not making them before those first games, because the first three games are winnable. You got at Wyoming, Northern Illinois, and Jacksonville State, and then you go play at Ole Miss, Cincinnati, at Navy before your first break. Like, get those first three wins because you're gonna need them. Like, you got to have them wins in your back pocket. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.